Alright, I apologize ahead of time, not for offending anybody, but if my phone falls out of its place, because it's just kind of delicately balanced between a, a container of gum and my ID badge for work and a spoon and a plastic fork. So, um, anyways, I, I'm going to share a story that kind of came to me. Um, so imagine, if you will, I'm a... Uh, I'm living next door to a guy who's like really, really in shape. He's buff, he's just, you know, and any guy would be jealous of him and any girl would want him. Um, and he's just like, wow, man, that, that's awesome. And I'm, uh, what, what, uh, what you have is something that I want. You know, so, so then I'm, I'm looking at this guy and not that I'm jealous, but in a, in a way, like, admiring without that gross admiring, you know? And it's it's not quite coveting, but just like, wow. But what, what you have is something that I'd like to achieve, something that I'd, I'd like to, you know, be mentored by, you know? And so, so I, I, I asked this guy, uh, hey, you know, uh, what, what do you do? Are you taking supplements? You, you, you working out? And, and he tells me I'm, I'm in the military. I'm like, ah, oh, well, that explains it. And um, so uh, I said, so, so where do you go work out? Where, and he's like, oh, I, I don't go to a gym. I, you know, do a lot of calisthenics, a lot of whatever. And I'm like, well, do you mind my hanging with you? Let's uh, let's do this thing. Because uh, I, I kind of look up to you and uh. So then we get to talking. I'm like, how do you know all this stuff? And he's like, well, I, I learned from a drill instructor. He's been on the enemy lines. He, he's, he knows how the enemy thinks. And, and uh, everything I'm teaching you, I learned from him. And so uh, you can go to the surplus store and you can get the military outfits and and uh you know I, I could end up being just like him I could have the arms the cardiovascularity the stamina the self-confidence but when I when I go to a mall would I ever recognize his drill instructor would there be any recognition of what I've gotten and would I be able to give him any credit? Would I be able to thank him for anything? Would he recognize me as anybody that he even knows? And what what brought that to my mind is that in the Bible there is a point where not everybody cries out, Lord, Lord, will be saved. And this story just hits a, it should be hitting a very harsh reality that these people were claiming to heal in his name, claiming to perform miracles, casting out demons, and Jesus, God in the flesh, who is fully God and fully man, who knows their hearts, knows all things, cannot tell a lie. He told them, I tell you the truth, I never knew you. And to get away from me, you workers of iniquity. He didn't call them out on, oh no, you're wrong, you're lying. More than likely, they were probably doing these things. They learned from somebody in front of them, this is how you do it and they're putting a stamp of Jesus' name on everything they do. And yes, God will get the glory, but if we don't recognize him as our Lord and Savior, there's a dysfunction in that relationship. There is a, an identity theft. There's a different gospel that's being preached out there. And 
I'm hoping to clear that up. We don't have to be good enough for God to love us. And yet, He died for us while we were yet sinners. We didn't have to earn brownie points to get in. He died for us to save us from our sin, to let us into His kingdom, if, if we believe. There's a different gospel out there that's almost like uh, all you got to do is name it, you claim it, you say it like if it was, even if it wasn't, and it becomes almost like a, a, a lying in his name, using his stamp of approval to get you what you want. That, that same type of spirit is probably what Simon the Magician was hoping to get, you know, to purchase when Simon, who became Peter, told him, may you perish along with your money, you can't buy the Holy Spirit. But that same deceiver that's been out, the father of all lies, he's promoting a slightly different twist on things. Um, so I, I, I say a few of these things to, to kind of help you get in tune with the only one whose name under heaven man can be saved. It is Jesus. But if Satan and his cohorts, the fallen angels, masquerade as angels of light, there's definitely a call for discernment that's necessary. Um, because not only do we need to know what Jesus we were preached and what we were taught but but who's our father who are we where do we find our, our identity is it in ourself or is it in him and, and there's just so much more I could go into this topic um, and, and I would rather be biblically correct than politically correct there are, uh, there are quite a few things that almost sound really, really nice on the surface. Like, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say it at all. That, that only gets you but so far, and basically it brings you to isolation. Because um, we were made to be in a community. We were made out of love from the one who loves us despite us. And so, yeah, sometimes we may have some things that we want to get out, but our, our, our political agenda of don't say anything harsh comes across as nice on the surface, but you know, I mean, how soon would it lead to, oh, you know what, I don't want to stop that guy from from shoplifting because I might offend him or I might I might hurt his feelings. I might I'm, I might be shot or hurt or, or, or I don't want to stop that guy from beating up the girl because, you know, I, I, just, I just don't want to get involved or, or I don't want to stop that gang rape from happening because, you know, I, I don't know, maybe maybe she deserved it. Maybe she, you know dressed in a provocative way, or maybe she cheated on her husband. Who knows? Um, There's so many things that we could stand against in trying to keep each other from hurting each other, but our political correct agenda of, oh no, don't get involved, it's not your place, know your role, it has turned our country into a backsliding, wussified nation that, that doesn't even, they don't even trust the police officers anymore. And yeah, there are some corrupt ones, but it doesn't mean that all of them are corrupt. I mean, our, our nation has, has started this fuller erosion of just, you know, even the morals, the morality. When you, when you talk about 
you know, I, I know some of the folks would be like, I'll oh, stop shoving your religion down my ears. You can't force me to believe. And you know what? I, you're right. I can't force you to believe. And yet, we we have this um, this this agenda from the government of people that we've elected into place that continue to say one thing and do another. They're in the machine, and and yet they're still passing laws as a way of basically shoving morals into our ears. And this is what we want you to think as being right. And this is what we want you to think as being wrong. You know, a, a child is basically just a clump of cells for, for the some that want to believe that way. And, and yet, there's just so many feelings that are hurt over poor decisions back in life and you know there's forgiveness available you know God God knows that we're going to screw up God knows that we're not perfect only he is he was the one who died on the cross shed his blood for the forgiveness of all sins of everybody everywhere if they believe and he doesn't force us to believe it but we've, we've got this invisible God called political correctness, which is not correct. It, it, it's more like it's, it's wrecked at the core. Um, it's like two words, core and wrecked. Um, I, I probably said um a whole lot. And it, it is kind of crazy, though, when you think about God and his love for us. And, and we can be so divisive. And, and, and yet he offers believers a, a device sieve, if you will. It, it's discernment. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. It allows you to, to know what is of God and what is not. We're told to be like the Bereans and to, to study the scriptures to know that what we hear comes from God. And lately in our culture, uh, we've, we've been so confused as a nation, you know. We, we, we've been fed like all sorts of stuff, like all dogs go to heaven, everybody goes to heaven. Anybody with, you know, breath in their lungs goes to heaven. All people go to heaven. And, and yes, 2 Peter 3.9 talks about how it's not God's desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But he's not a puppet master in the sky, and he's not forcing us to repent. He's not forcing us to believe. He's not forcing us to ask him for forgiveness. He's not forcing us to ask him, make me new. Let me get a second chance. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised eternity unless we're holding on to the one who's holding on to us. The one whose hand is strong enough to never let go of us. The one who says he can't get to me except through the Father. The one whose Father says he can't get to me but through the Son. And, and Jesus was praying to his disciples, I want you to be one with me like I am with the Father and the Father with me. And so that's, there is this oneness that we were designed for, but so often we, we get a little off course, and then we want to become one with creation and, and not the creator. And we start setting up idols, and yeah, I love you, God, but, and, and we come like little Jonas, where yeah, I heard what you told me, but I'm gonna go that way. And, I mean, so the whole being nice to somebody, I mean, if you read the Bible, it talks about how Jonah's uh, captains of a ship when he was running away from God in complete disobedience and, and, and disregard for these Ninevites that God wanted to, 
to let them know that if they continue this way, they would be destroyed. And Jonah didn't want any part of it. He's like, you don't know him like I know him, God. I'm going the other way. And so these guys in a boat that Jonah hired to take me as far as away from that other direction as you can, the storm started coming in and they were praying to their gods and it wasn't working. And they were throwing out their own livelihood from the boats to try to keep this human being that they just met and it wasn't even their job he was basically just somebody who hired him on kind of like an uber driver you know like well here, here here's some money can you take me across the water and they were doing a really nice thing they were probably throwing away months of wages for this guy who brought these problems <laughs> on them because of his disobedience to the Lord and we we so want to look good we so want people to like us and doing good for others isn't such a bad thing I'm not saying don't do good to anybody and, and you'll definitely look like a Christian that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is that sometimes we focus on ourselves and maybe trying to get the glory that's only due God. Um, and yet, he's willing to give so much to us. I mean, every breath that we get is given to us by him. He, he gives us breath by his Holy Spirit, and he lets us choose how we use it. Whether we lift up his name, Lift up somebody else or, or curse his name. Curse his name. Curse ourselves. Curse the day we were born. He, he doesn't force us to see him for who he is. But the only way to really know who he is is to cry out to him. To recognize that you know that you're not perfect. And, and not that you have to beg for eternal life because he offers it freely. He doesn't force belief, but he tells his followers to go tell the world. In and out of season, to the ends of the earth, to all nations. And I think the church needs to be uh, shaken up a little bit because just being nice isn't necessarily helping people in the eternal spectrum. Just being nice is like being on an elevator and just, you know, oh, hi, okay, how's the weather? Uh, yeah, all right, have a good day. And yeah, maybe that might be the only nice thing somebody has done for that person in a long time and I'm not saying don't do that but the church kind of needs to step it up you know we, we, we don't want to look like hypocrites of course not because you know you can judge a tree by the fruit I get that but just saying nice things and not sharing the hope we have with Christ the only Savior we're not doing that person any favors. You know, we, we aren't to condemn others. It's not our place to judge. The Bible says that, uh, you know, we, we can't judge people that are outside of the kingdom. But they're in God's jurisdiction at that point. Only he knows the heart. But we are to be able to encourage each other in the faith. And not just a faith or like faith in faith itself. But the faith in, in God being faithful. He is the only one who's going to be able to do what he said he'll do. And you think about perseverance, patience. Patience uh, is a shortened word from long suffering. 
we've suffered more than an eternal God waiting, waiting on us. When you think about it, because he doesn't force us, but there will be a time when he comes back. And he's either going to find us about his business, not a dollar business. And that's, that's another lie of Satan there. Because God says you can serve God or mammon, not both. And the two uh, in, in the eternal spectrum are not going to uh, cohabitate in the same way. Um, but my, uh, my, my, my video is to try to urge fellow Christians on and, and not to just hold on to what you've heard preached over a pulpit, but to make sure that what you've heard comes from God. We've, we've got a, we've got a confused nation. And by, by us being the light to the world, I don't think he just meant for us to flick the lighter and, and hold it around. No, and, you know, Jesus said that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. And he's the only way to eternal life. He's the only way to your ultimate true purpose. And... So I, I think it's time for, for us all to step it up. I'm, I'm in this thing too. It's not that I am your drill instructor. But we, we, we need to step it up. Not so that God loves us more. Not so that we earn brownie points. But there are plenty of folks that are showing their fruit and, and, and we're in a hurting world. We can't just wash our hands of it and say God will do it all and make him a butler because he's not a butler. And it also speaks in the Bible. It says, if, you know, all of my commands. You know, that's how I know you love me. If you love me, you'll follow my commands. And the two most important ones are love God and love your neighbor. Jesus said to love even your enemies. You know, while he's being pounded on the cross by people he loved and he's asking forgiveness, shedding more grace then all of us put together have single cell organisms in us. I mean, he, he, is, he is gone so far above and beyond any expectation that we could try to put on him, and yet we, we get so selfish and greedy and we still want more from him. And it's a learning process. But I know that I know that my Redeemer lives. And I know that I would not be who I am or where I am or even be at all if it weren't for Him. And it's not about bragging about how much of a mess I made. It's not about trying to outdo each other's sin just to see who can, who can sink worse before Jesus rescues you. I mean, it's, it's not about an adrenaline rush of spiritual nature. I mean, it's not about tempting God. It's, it's about connect, connection. Not only with each other, but the one who made us. I know my thoughts can tend to go all over the place. And um, I'm encouraged by knowing that God is building his church. It's, it's not by my wise words or clever speech. So 
So in a way, it takes a little bit of the burden off that Jesus said, my burden is light. So I would encourage you to, to read John 3, 16 through 18. And a lot, a lot of times we, we like to just cut things out because they are what feels good and sounds good. But only he has the ability to separate good and bad people. We, we can't steal morals from him and try to put our own stamp of approval and get ourselves to heaven or create our own destinies. The, the, the only slight tangent of creating our own destinies is by choosing whether to accept the free gift of salvation or not. There, there are two destinies. There are redeemed, forgiven, accepted, loved eternally, forever, or, or separated from God eternally, forever. So we can all coexist on earth for a time. We are not all going to be saved unless we all believe. Believe on the Lord our God. I would encourage you to, to make, make sure that you are secure and not fall to being a victim of the father of all lies, identity theft. If, if Jesus loves me and could save me from my sin, he could save anybody. He's, he's willing. He's just waiting. Tomorrow's not promised. So just think about these things. Wrestle with him if you need to. Cry out to him. But the last thing you want to do is to try to check out sources other than the Bible to try to figure out what the truth is. Because that's like that's like trying to go to a Ford dealership and ask them to work on your Toyota. <laughs>